Hello everyone, I am Be Better Gamer and welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling. This channel is dedicated to the classic series of N64 wrestling games developed by Aki Corporation, which if you are unfamiliar were WCW NWO World Tour, WCW NWO Revenge, Virtual Wrestling 64, Virtual Wrestling 2, which is this game I'm playing right now, WrestleMania 2000, and WWF No Mercy. In this episode, I will be going over how I unlocked Naoya Ogawa in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 and I'm going to talk a little bit about his feud with Shinya Hajimoto because Shinya Hajimoto you actually have to use him to unlock Ogawa. Now my last Let's Play I talked about uh, how going forward I was going to use the Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 translation but I actually had recorded all this footage before I stopped doing my Let's Plays for Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. So I figured, let me just do this one and then I'll do the translation Let's Play. So there you go. That was the intro scene for when you start Royal Road Secession. So I had to start a brand new Royal Road Secession. But I'm actually, through the power of editing, I'm just going to fast forward to the match right before I unlock Ogawa. So basically, the requirements are you have to play... Royal Road Secession, which, if you've never played Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, is similar to WrestleMania 2000's uh, story mode, career mode, whatever championship mode, whatever you want to call it. And you go through the calendar of all Japan, but you only have to do, you only have to get to the end of July with Shinya Hajimoto. And then after you get to the end of July and you finish that last match in July, which for me, it ended up being Jun Izumita. Um, once you beat him, you'll get a message screen which says, uh-oh, a new challenger appears. Who is it going to be? And it's Nao Ogawa. Then you have to beat him. And then there you go. He's unlocked. So I'm going to show you the match I have with Izumita. And then you're going to see the match I have with Ogawa. And then I'm going to show you how I did the edit for Ogawa. And then after that, I'm going to have another match with Ogawa and Hajimoto. So a lot of, a lot of fun stuff that I'm going to be showing off. And, and again, the reason why I'm doing this still in my Japanese cartridge of Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 and not my Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 translated ROM is because this was already recorded, so I figured I might as well use it. Going forward for my next few Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 Let's Plays, uh, I am going to be doing a combination of continuing to unlock all the wrestlers in the game but also all the other unlockables in the games i've been getting a lot of questions ever since i started doing the virtual wrestling 2 let's plays how to unlock various things so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna show more of that finish off all the characters i've unlocked so i have to re-unlock everything that i already unlocked in the cartridge on my rom so i'm probably not gonna do new let's plays on those people i've already unlocked i'll just focus on the ones i haven't unlocked yet and a lot of them are MMA fighters. The last unlock video that I did before this was Bass Rutan, you know, and I still have a bunch of people like Mark Kerr and the Gracies to unlock. So got a lot of fun stuff. Gonna gonna talk be talking about a lot of MMA with a lot of these unlock videos because much like Ogawa and MMA, I'm I'm more of a novice in that field. I wouldn't say I'm as knowledgeable at all like I am with pro wrestling, uh, with, with WWE, WCW, Jap Japanese wrestling, even a little bit of Mexican wrestling. I know way more of than uh, MMA, but it's a learning experience, which is why I like doing these Let's Plays. So here I go. I started the match, and if you saw real quick when they showed the match options, this is actually going to be a standard pro wrestling match, even though in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, Ogawa does have the MMA fighting style. Um, which, if you're unfamiliar, in Virtual Wrestling 2, unlike the rest of the Akai games, the MMA fighting style was exclusive to this game where you your strong grapples were a lot different than your regular strong grapples when you were doing uh, playing as a wrestler. Uh, you had your strong A grapples would be your combo hits, and then your strong B grapples would be your regular wrestling moves, but then you could do a mounting system where you can mount... Uh, lying on top of the guy with his you know, facing forward you or if you're mounting him from a rear position um, They had an MMA rule set which you can do based on knockouts time rounds everything. It's really cool. It's really in-depth 
uh, and it works seamlessly in the Aki engine, which is so cool. It almost makes me wonder, and I, I think I mention this probably every time I do an MMA match or I use an MMA wrestler. Uh, Virtual Wrestling 2 came out, you know, in January of 2000, and then No Mercy would come out in October, November of 2000. And it always makes me wonder if they kept it in there, how much more... I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't say popular. Like people still remember No Mercy, but considering how big MMA is now, like how much more people would be going back to No Mercy because it had the MMA fight system in it, even though no one in there used it. You know, Brock Lesnar wouldn't show up until a few years later. Um, but even then, when he showed up in WWF, he still hadn't become you know Brock Lesnar UFC World Champion. He was still years from doing that. So. It's interesting. I always think about, you know, the what ifs, but I'm glad that it's in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 because even someone like me who's not an MMA fan, it's still a fun system to play with. I really don't watch MMA. I don't. I, I try to keep, you know, aware of it, but I don't I don't watch it. There I go. There I am getting mounted on <laughs> by Ogawa, and that's not how Ogawa looks. So that's why I talked about in the beginning I'm going to have to change how he looks because in this game again, if you've watched any of my other Let's Plays or if you're unfamiliar with Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, the license for this game belongs to All Japan Pro Wrestling, so only the All Japan wrestlers look like how they were supposed to. Everyone else looked different, I guess, to avoid copyright issues. The Fire Pro Wrestling games were the same way. They're done the same way. Even the most recent Fire Pro game that just came out, Fire Pro Wrestling World, is still kind of done the same way where they just use fake wrestlers, but you can make all these other real wrestlers and they got a great community going making all the wrestlers um, that aren't technically supposed to be in the game but they are because <laughs> you can make them but same thing here the wrestlers are kind of just pre-built and you just got to change their appearances and, and, and attire and things like that but all their moves their taunts everything are the same so here I am just doing a regular match and they make you play as Hajimoto one can only imagine because the feud between Hajimoto and Ogawa was one of the biggest feuds uh, in the late 90s for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Obviously, Hajimoto was one of the biggest stars of New Japan Pro Wrestling ever. And Ogawa, Ogawa was an accomplished judo champion before coming into New Japan. Uh, he won various championships and medals in judo uh, winning a bunch of medals in the all japan championships and the world judo championships which is the highest you can get in the world of competitive judo or as i'm told by wikipedia because uh, again i'm not a judo expert but still i don't have a silver i don't have a silver medal in the 1992 olympic games for judo like ogawa does and it it was it's interesting when i was looking that up he lost, so again, I'm not a big judo expert, but he lost to a person, his name was David, and I'm going to butcher his last name, uh, Kak Haleshvili, can't say it, didn't say it right, most likely, but he's from the country of Georgia, he beat Ogawa uh, in the finals for the 1992 Olympic Games in the judo category, and I only mention this because David K, as I like to call him, is actually also in Virtual Pro Wrestling 64 with Ogawa and how you unlock Ogawa in Virtual Pro Wrestling 64 is pretty much almost the same way you have to win the, the New Japan title at, with Hajimoto and you unlock Ogawa but the funny thing they did in that game is that when you go to the roster and you go to the character select and if you press Z you get alternate outfits and sometimes those alternate outfits are actually different wrestlers entirely so for Hajimoto, when you unlock Ogawa, really you're just unlocking a different outfit per se for him. And it happens to be Ogawa, but then if you press it again, it's David K, the guy who beat him for the gold medal. So <laughs> he never went to become a wrestler. He never did anything like that. So it's just interesting that he was included in the game. I had never heard of him until I saw his name in Virtual Pro Wrestling 64. So the only reason why I noticed it now is because... When I saw his name with Ogawa, I was like, oh, wow, this guy actually exists. He's real. Uh, <laughs> but Ogawa would end up placing fifth in the 96 Olympics. And then in 1907, he was recruited by Antonio Inoki for uh, his uh, UFO promotion, Universal Fighting Arts Organization, trained under Satoru, Satoru Sayama, the original Tiger Mask. 
and the rest as they say is history when he would make his debut in 1997 at a Tokyo Dome show against Hajimoto and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that but right now so here we go I'm at the through the power of editing I'm at the wrestler select screen and there's some of the other wrestlers I've already unlocked including Tiger Mask and now you just go in and I base my edits on Shima's Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 edits which is a uh, uh, edit guy that was around ever since this game came out back in the day I don't know where Shima is now but he did a fantastic job making this edit guide way back in the day was which was my big resource when I first had this game and I still use it today shockingly no one really has ever done another edit guide since and honestly the more I've been doing these videos and the more questions I've been getting I think I might do a modern day update for the guide I think I might do both. I think I might do a text guide and I might do a video guide, but that's going to be kind of a long, a ways away. But I, I think I will be doing a full on virtual Pro wrestling to, you know, 2017 or hell, even 2018 version, um, editing all the characters because I've, be I've begun to notice as I go back and I keep referencing this guy, there are a lot of inconsistencies and some things I don't necessarily agree with. And again, it's all in interpretation so even right now what I'm doing with Shima's edit and how I'm changing him you can even interpret it your own way too if you want to change his you know what he looks like and what style he wears honestly Ogawa didn't really you know wear too many flashy things uh, he apparently he used to wrestle in a judo in, in a judo garb um, and then he switched over to just the black tights and the black you know kick pads and the gloves I've seen him wear a variation of like short tights and things like that. So, I mean, if you know other outfits that you want to do for Ogawa, go ahead. Feel free. Uh, you're not beholden to what I'm just doing or what Shima did in his guy. That's the beauty of these games. You can change them however you want. But there I go. I just quickly cloning all of them. And yeah, this might be the last time for a while you see me playing on the Japanese cartridge. I say that now, but then watch next week. I'll do something from the Japanese cartridge because it's a lot of work to do it again for the translation guide as I'm figuring out but uh, so now now that we've got Ogawa unlocked now you know how to do it now you're probably playing it you can listen to the rest of this video while I talk a little bit about the feud with Hajimoto and Ogawa which was a feud that honestly at the time I didn't understand the significance of um, you know right around when I got Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 is really when I started getting into Japanese wrestling. So the feud pretty much was at its tail end uh, in the year 2000. But I didn't really understand the significance of Ogawa and what Enoki was trying to do until much later. Because again, a lot of it had to do with Enoki wanting to introduce MMA into New Japan. Something that he's been doing all his career really being a pioneer in the world of mixed martial art artists but Ogawa was kind of like one his big project at that time he's had many projects over the year uh, probably most famously recently being Shinsuke Nakamura who was a student of Noki and another wrestler that Noki wanted to recreate in his own image but Ogawa made his debut at the Tokyo Dome against Shinya Hajimoto in April 12th of 1997 Hajimoto was champion, and Hajimoto was actually scheduled to face Ken Shamrock, but Ken Shamrock did not uh, make the match. Instead, Ogawa was subbed in, and Ogawa was representing Anoki's UFO, and surprise to everyone at the time, Ogawa wins his very first match against one of the biggest stars, the current champion of New Japan, and that actually set up a rematch for Ogawa to properly challenge Hajimoto for his IWGP championship he wouldn't win that rematch but that was pretty much the beginning of the feud the beginning of the feud of Hajimoto being threatened of Ogawa this new protege this new student of Anoki there I go doing the bird plane spin Ogawa was kind of a weird guy watching clips of him he would just all of a sudden do this weird like airplane spin he never really seemed to me at least and again my knowledge of him is probably very minimal but watching some clips he always had this weird casualness about him I uh, don't, don't really understand it. I'm going to have to watch more Ogawa stuff. But he wrestled a lot of worked shoot matches uh, in New Japan with a lot of other famous um, non-wrestlers who were competing in wrestling. That was something big that 
Onoki was even doing with Hajimoto, having Hajimoto do matches like that. But it really, it all comes down to 1999 Tokyo Dome show between Ogawa and Hajimoto, which is one of the hardest things to find footage on. I actually just recently watched it on Daily Motion. Someone finally uploaded it. I've been trying to find this match for years. And this was a match that all of a sudden it seemed like i mean if you watch the match you very clearly see ogawa shooting for real on hajimoto and he's hitting him with stiff kicks and stiff punches and he doesn't even seem threatened he doesn't even seem like he wants to cooperate with the match and you got his ufo crew on the outside and the Shin hajimoto's new japan crew on the outside and then they start getting involved with the match and everyone's fighting and shoving and yelling and they're yelling at ogawa the ref calls the match when like hajimoto is just lying out on the ramp of the tokyo dome and it was pretty intense to watch it really was and i had to uh email dave Meltzer. i'm not like on emailing terms with him but i submitted a question to him because i want to know like what how real was this Hajimoto and Ogawa had this long feud that would even continue after that and Hajimoto would actually have his retirement match in New Japan you know spoilers it's not he doesn't really retire but he would lose to Ogawa and then when Hajimoto would go to 0-1 Ogawa would come over and join him in 0-1 so they obviously had a working relationship and friendship and when Hajimoto died uh, Ogawa would talk about him as his friend but that match seemed so real. It's If it was one of those work shoot angles that, you know, Inoki was behind, it was brilliant. And because even watching it now, even watching with the understanding of, uh, these guys had to be friends. These guys had to know what was going on. You can't fake being punched in the face, even if it's your friend doing it. And it was pretty scary because... You didn't know who else was in on it. Was the ref in on it? Was the the, the wrestlers on the outside in on it? Did, did Inoki tell anyone? Did, did Ogawa and Hajimoto tell anyone? Did Inoki and Ogawa even tell Hajimoto? And then maybe afterwards he was like, well, sorry we had to do that to you, but we wanted to make Ogawa a big star, so we had him punch you in the face for real. You know, <laughs> so, and especially as someone of Ogawa's caliber, at that time, he definitely seemed like he could take down Hajimoto if Hajimoto wanted to truly defend himself. So, very interesting. If you can watch that match, check it out. You can find it on Daily Motion. It's really hard to find. And, you know, maybe later on when I find a little bit more about the real goings on, if Meltzer ever answers my question via email on his podcast, maybe I can come back and share that insight with you. But so I hope you enjoyed this video, this brief Let's Play. I'm going to be continuing to unlock all the rest of the Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 characters I don't have unlocked. And then I will be showing you how to do um, unlock, I will be doing unlock episodes, I should say, of the different outfits and other features in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. So stay tuned for that. Check out my other Let's Plays for WWF No Mercy, WCW and the Revenge, and all my other videos, my Creative Wrestler videos, all the fun stuff I have on my channel. I'll probably have some of those click boxes here while this is all going on. But I am Be Better Gamer. Thank you for watching. As always, until next time, keep watching all the wrestling. Thank you.